Sometimes we've got to turn to God again. Some of us are riding in disappointment. Some of us are just settled down for what we're seeing. Some of us are just content with where we're at. We've got to be stirred. We've got to feel the very essence and very presence and very spirit and very word of God for this season. God needs Malaysia on fire for him. He needs the church burning with a hunger to see the power of God changing people's lives. He wants the church to manifest that glory through them, the church, through us, the church. God wants to manifest his glory through us. What is glory? When I talk about glory or, or we talk about glory, we talk about glory as the essence of God, the very, the, not just presence, but essence, life, personal. See, if you ever want to see God, when God, when Moses got so turned on for God, he began to start to so, so, get so hungry that he went into the mountains. He's in second encounter with God after the burning bush was in a mountain in Sinai. And it was in the mountain and, and he was crying out to God in fasting and prayer. And he says, God, I want to see your face. I want to see who you are. And God said, if I showed you exactly who I was, you'd fry, you'd die. You couldn't really understand it. So what God did is he put a face on Jesus and he put the glory, the whole glory of God into Jesus, the God man. And Jesus, now we see him in us, the hope of glory. God in you, the hope of glory. Jesus in you, the hope of glory to a world. Not just someone coming to church and just sitting back, but you are something. You are somebody in Christ. And you've got to know it. You've got to understand it. You've got to sense the kind of spirit that never lose that uh, sense of the tingling, that, that kind of sense of, the, of God going to do something phenomenal, something amazing amongst us. We can't, we've got to come back to that. We've got to draw to that. That the prayer meetings are not just, oh, well, I'm tired and I'm good. Oh, oh. Oh, no, no we've got to come to the prayer meeting with a sense of God's power we can do something amazing here. We've got to change to meet with what God wants to achieve in the planet. And we've got to carry it with Him. We've got to grow with Him. We've got to develop it. See, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 tells us this story. It says that Jesus is the perfect perfect revelation of God's glory. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his word. That's God. That's who God is. And God, when you accepted him into your life, the whole manifestation of what God wanted to do came into you. But you have to realise it. You have to understand it. See, the Bible says, the same, the very same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. It don't dwell in some space somewhere or some atmosphere or some kind of feeling. The same spirit, that same essence of God, that glory of God dwells in your life. Wow. And when you become and you understand that, it begins to start to shape the very world in which you live. It begins to start to say all around me, I want to see God perform miracles. I want to see God do glorious things. I want to see God do things through my life. And in the world in which I live, I want to see him do great changes. When you've got that type of expectancy in the things of God, when you become revelationary, revealing all that God's got for you, the truth of that, it brings about an amazing difference. So church, if we're going to expect the glory, we've got to come back with a new essence of seeking the Lord. We're going to seek him. Not when it's duty time. I'm here to seek God because it's church and Sunday's off. 
Oh, we've got to seek Him. We've got to seek Him at work. We've got to seek Him in our moments. We've got to seek Him in our lives on a constant basis. The Bible says this, Seek the Lord and do what is right and keep your eyes on God constantly. When we seek the Lord, when we're in His presence, when we're seeking Him, He does astonishing things with our mindsets. It begins to start to change the very mindset in which I live in. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon His name. So church, when do we stop doing that? Oh, well, I'm all right now. I've got a good job. I've got the car. I've got the wife. I've got the family. Everything's going well. Well, we stop the hunger. We stop the seeking. We've got to return again back to our first love. We've got to return again to seek the Lord. When do we ever come into a church and kind of expect, well, this is what it's going to be? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's the program. And so we go through A, B, C, D, F, G and we never see phenomena because we don't expect it, because we're not seeking it. We're not coming together as a church to have the wonder of God again electrified in my life, alive in me, God in me, alive, a hope of glory. Colossians says this, if you were raised with Christ, Seek those things which are above, come on church, where Christ is seated. But this is what we do. Well, Father, if you would just come and give me more money for my business, if you'd come and build my house, if you'd come and do this, if you come and do that, and God's saying, hang on, hang on, you're seeking me for needs. You're seeking me for your circumstances. You're seeking me for the things that are, that are harboring your mindset. When are you going to seek me for who I am? When are you going to divorce yourself from what you do and just abandon yourself to me? That's, the God, that's what God wants from us. Church, he wants that personal attention. Come on, if your kids always came to you and, you know, Diane, you always came to, you know, uh, Brother Daniel, and may I say, what a wonderful family you, you have. And... You know, Diane just kept coming to Daniel and saying, well, I want the car, I want my allowance, I want this, I want that, I want this. And, and he, that, she never spends any time saying, well, I love your dad and, you know, you're just a fantastic, good, good, good father and, you know, I, I just love you for who you are. See, that's what type of lifestyle we get into. We just go to dad and just say, give me, give me, give me, give me, I want to give me, I want to give me, it's just Chinese for I want more, 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 more. And you know, sometimes in our lives, that's what we do. You know, David said this, I long for your courts, God. I long for your presence. I long for you. Not the kingdom anymore. Not the wives, not the house, not the all. I, I just want you, God. I want you, God. When that type of hunger comes, when that type of thirst for God is within our lives, whoo, watch out. Because God does way above what I could even think or know or even explain in his name. He said this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and other things, all these other things shall be added where? Under me. But we seek things. Oh God, please come and deal with my thing. Come and do this. Come and do... We have needs and wants. Oh, and God's gracious. He is. He'll meet your need. He'll, he'll meet your want. But sometimes I just think that God's crying out for, could you stop coming for me for needs and wants? Could you come and just love me? Could, could you just come and love me? Not for any other preconceived position or intentional motive, but just to love God. And we, church, we hate the silence. We hate silence. So we come, we pray, we make this up, we do this, we do that. 
But we never sit silently before the Lord and say, speak to me. And out of that, I'll speak. Show me marvelous and wonderful things and I will speak. You're glorious. You do great things. You change people's lives. You do amazing things. Second thing, I, I feel that God wants us to understand in church that's so eternal, so important, so needful is that we need to be building a temple. A temple not made with hands, but a temple made by God. The Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the temple of the Holy Ghost, God resides. <laughs> we still got to start getting that. When God resides in the temple, sickness cannot stay. When God resides in the temple, wrong thoughts, wrong opinions, wrong ideas, wrong philosophies, wrong theologies, they cannot stay. When God resides in the temple, when the temple is abandoned to God, when the temple is the Holy Spirit, and the Bible says this, I want God's house, the house of God, the Lord's house to be built exceedingly magnificent. Listen to this. Of fame and glory through the land. Can we comprehend that? Can we comprehend it? I want that temple. And, and, and the temple's twofold. The temple's not just what's going on in me, but the temple is what we're building for the Lord experience exponentially or extensionally from our lives. So what God's doing through me is an extension of what I build for the kingdom of God. What are we doing to build the temple? Do we consume it? Is it consuming our passions, our time? I remember many years ago when <clears throat> I was a young pastor and uh, we took over an old skating ring. <laughs> and this skating, oh, sorry, it wasn't a skating ring, it was an old picture theatre. And when we walked into the picture theatre, they hadn't had the movies there. They hadn't had a movie in that picture house for 10 years. It had been abandoned. So we're sitting there derelict. And when we walked into the place and opened the doors and dust over the place and the chairs and everything was just dusty and everything was like, you know, in, built in the 40s and the 50s. And we had to go and liven this place up for church. I remember sleeping on the floor in that place, ripping chairs out of the place, spending my whole life there, just building the work, building the temple of God so that our church would have a place that people could come to, that, that they could enjoy, that they could have. See, the Bible says 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, For your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, in whom God resides, and you are no longer of your own. I like that. I like that. That means God's operating this thing. Whoo-wee. I better allow him to engage my life, to do amazing things through me. Third thing and I want to talk about today is a restoration of proper worship back into our lives. A restoration of worship back into our lives. Worship church is not a five-minute Hallelujah, hallelujah at church on Sunday. Worship is a devotion to God. If your worship doesn't lift you, if your worship doesn't move you, if your worship isn't, isn't kind of say, ah, kind of adoration to God, then our worship is dying. Oh, we sing songs. Oh, yeah, we, we play instruments. Uh, we do it, but personally, uh, I'm dying inside. 